I have a sample here of an unknown substance. I believe it's a salt, but I don't know which one. And so what I want to do is try and find out. Now, one of the ways that we can do this is to work out what the metal might be by doing some flame tests. And what we need to do with that is, obviously, we need a flame. And we'll want to put that onto a roaring Bunsen flame to make it hot. And then what I'm going to do is just pick up a small sample of this stuff on a piece of nichrome wire. And then let's see what this substance might be. So let's adjust the Bunsen flame. So it's a roaring flame. And we'll see what colour it will be. Well, that's quite happily some sort of red meant some other colors as well but it's the first color that we really see here because i've got some other may have some other things on there that could be an impurity having lost our other substance try it again and you see initially it comes up that sort of red color so Let's see if we can work out what this substance might be. Now to do that, we need to compare that with some other substances. And what we need to do is to check them against what colour we saw. It's a red colour and I know something else that is red. And this is lithium chloride just really lithium. So I'm going to take another piece of wire and put that into this metal um, nichrome wire holder. I don't need to change the wire each time. I can clean it, but it's not sometimes very effective trying to clean it. And you'll see that if we just take a piece of wire where it's been handled, it is and shows perhaps some sort of other colour on it. So I'm just going to make sure that that's all gone first. So having sort of cleaned my wire, the, there aren't really any other strong sort of colours there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dip this into some pure water and then I'm going to take out a small crystal of lithium chloride. So let's try lithium. And this is certainly burning with a red flame but is it the same colour red flame that we saw before. This one seems to me to be a little bit darker, perhaps a little bit more crimson. So there is our lithium flame. So hard to tell really. It could be lithium. I'm just going to try my other sample again, just so I can compare it. What do you think? Do you think it could be that one? Well, there are other substances that it could be. So let's try looking at a few of those and just to see that we might be on the right track. So I think a good contender here is lithium. But I know of another substance that sort of burns with a reddish flame and this is calcium so let's just compare calcium here so again what i'm going to do is just load up a new piece of wire i want a tiny bit of calcium on here This 
worked perfectly when I did it. This is where you may cut a little bit out in editing, Paul. Right. So I've got a small piece of calcium, this is calcium chloride, let's have a look at this. Well that doesn't seem terribly convincing it's the same colour. We have got this sort of reddish colour, but then it's also probably the wrong reddish colour. That to me is a more of an orangey red. So probably not calcium. There you can see I dumped it in the flame. So probably not calcium. So it's looking probably like lithium at the moment. But I do have some other substances that also burn with this red flame. And another one of these substances is strontium. Now, I've got this one here, this is strontium. Let's just clean the wire first. So that's looking quite clear. Let's now just pick up a little piece of strontium. And that's looking a much more likely contender for the colour. So there's my sample of strontium. Let's go back to the original. And to me that looks like a very worthy contender looking very very similar so I think it could be strontium there are of course other metals that burn with other colors so let's just have a quick look at some of these I don't believe it is potassium but I am going to just check to be sure. Now potassium is a very interesting metal and it's interesting because when it burns it burns with an interesting colour flame. So we'll just clean this off. So 
I'm just making sure there's too, not too much contamination here. And that's burning pretty clear. So let's put on some potassium chloride. why I'm wearing gloves here. Here we are, some potassium chloride. Let's burn some potassium chloride. And it's sort of, I got a, they call it a lilac colour flame. I see a lot of yellow in there. That can be because of some impurities. And there's that sort of gorgeous colour of potassium. Now, often people say this is invisible through cobalt glass. So what I'm going to do so I'm going to hold up a bit of this with some cobalt glass in front of it. See if you could see that it went more or less invisible. There we are there is potassium, definitely not potassium. It could be an interesting metal, like barium, and I have some barium chloride here. So let's just take a little bit of barium chloride and have a look at this. I'm wearing gloves, really, to try and stop as much contamination as I can. So that's fairly clear. Right, let's see what barium looks like. This is, as I said, barium chloride. And you may see there, it's sort of a a greenish colour. I can certainly see a lot of green at the bottom. So it's not that one. And I might even try a different white powder. Now this one is one that fools many people. Gonna check on my flame again, see if we can get it as clean as possible. So let's try now some of this white powder. No, I didn't see it that time.
Can you see a blue in there at all? There should be. Just there. Well, the substance I'm using here is copper sulfate. Now, when we looked at the white materials, we could easily say that, well, it can't be this blue one. We could eliminate it straight away. But in fact, this blue one is copper sulfate. Both are copper sulfate. This one is anhydrous copper sulfate, and the other one is the copper sulfate that you've probably seen before, the sort of blue copper sulfate. And if I can pick up one little crystal of copper sulfate. I've got lots of big ones here. These are all nicely made by my students. There we are, there's some copper. Let's have a look at this one. And much more convincing that one was copper. And sometimes when you put it back in water, it becomes a bit clearer to see. So, it's not copper. So, my guess is, having had a look at several different substances, we've looked at the crimson of lithium chloride, we've looked at the sort of brick red, I almost think this is orange, of calcium chloride, we've looked at... Potassium chloride, it's not that one. We've looked at barium chloride, which should be invisible through cobalt glass. We've looked at copper. The one that is perhaps the classic to have a look at is actually sodium chloride. I've saved this one to last because it's by far the sort of strongest colour that uh, we see. And in fact, you've seen it already as one of the contaminants of many of the substances that we've got and it's such a bright colour that we see it there is in fact the colour of sodium which is just got from contamination but if we have a look at some here sodium chloride you'll see exactly what I mean There is the bright yellow colour of sodium burning. And we can see very easily my substance wasn't that. So my conclusion from my experiment is that the nearest colour to this salt is strontium. So I now know my compound here is strontium. But strontium what? Is it strontium chloride? Is it strontium bromide? Is it strontium iodide? Is it strontium carbonate? Is it strontium sulfate? Well, what we need to do is a whole series of tests now to test to see which one that is.